Look away if you're freaked out by mega insects. A new species of giant stick insect has been discovered in a tropical rainforest in far north Queensland. Weighing about the same as a golf ball, it's believed to be the heaviest insect in Australia. Professor Angus Emmett from James Cook Uni found the insect about 20 minutes from his home early this year, and he joins us now from Lake Eacham on the beautiful Atham Tablelands in far north Queensland. Angus, g'day. So tell us what it was like for you when you first came across this mammoth specimen. Hi, Joe. Yeah, it was pretty neat. We, a friend of mine, the senior author on the paper that we published in Zoo Taxa recently, the two of us keep a close eye on photos of insects around on social media and we get contacted and Ross, the senior author, Ross Copeland, he received a photo of one from up in this part of the world where I now live. He lives down in Brisbane and we thought it was new. So we started searching and it took us a fair while to find it. We ended up finding two, but completely new Stick in seat, new to science, hasn't been described, so we decided to describe it, and it's it's a pretty neat insect. It's a very big, big fella, or a big girl, I should say. Yeah, there. This is the clincher. <laughs> These shots of um, you, presumably that's you or your mate, holding this thing. It's massive. They're, they're big. <laughs> So they're a brownie colour with the black coloured wings, but down on the side of the body when they flare the wings out, there's a beautiful green colour along the sides of the abdomen as well. So wow. they're a neat animal. Yeah. And so how high was it up in the canopy? Well, I think one of the reasons these are so, well, hadn't been described and so poorly known, number one, people wouldn't recognise that they're a new one, but they live up in the high altitude rainforests of the Atherton Tableland. So they live 900, 1,000 metres above sea level and higher. And they live up in the canopy. So the canopy is anywhere from 20 to 50 metres up. And the only time you actually get to see these animals is if you get a cyclone or a storm that knocks them down to the ground or a bird attacking them and knocks them down to the ground. Otherwise, they're up and out of sight, like many of the insects in the rainforest. And so you're pretty sure it's Australia's heaviest insect? Well, from the research that we've done so far, we can't find anything heavier. The, the big rhinoceros cockroach that you get up in this part of the world in the slightly dry, drier country up here was considered the heaviest. And it's around, it's in the 30 gram range and we've weighed, a friend of ours weighed one of these that was 44 grams. Wow. And so uh, it's probably the heaviest. Is it definitely the biggest? There is another stick insect up here, Tenomorpha gargantua. And it <laughs> that grows sounds some, pretty big. <laughs> some of the scientific names, so <laughs> some of them are unpronounceable. I moved up here from out in the Western Queensland Channel Country. And the rainforest plants, I just can't get my tongue around some of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I guess that's my problem, but yeah, I find it challenging. But the the gargantuan stick insect grows to nearly 600 millimetres. Ours only grows to about 400 millimetres, about the length of a person's forearm. But the other one's a very light-bodied insect, right. so it doesn't weigh much, even though it's yeah. longer. Okay, so what did you do with uh, that first insect or, or the first couple of insects? Well, we've only collected two. Yep. It's the only two we've killed. They were both females. We don't know the male yet. The males of male stick insects are usually considerably smaller than the females. But the two we got, we kept them and fed them and they laid eggs. Because one of the interesting thing about stick insects is every species of stick insect has eggs that are somewhat different. So by comparing the eggs to other species in the same genera, it enforced the fact that it's a different species without even doing the genetics. We could tell morph morphologically that it was a, dis a distinct species. And now you're a retired cattle farmer, Angus. Well, what's, what's it like for you? How did you end up this wandering the Atherton table and looking for um, exotic insects? Well, I've spent all my life on a family place that we've had for over, over 100 years now. My brother bought it off us, but 
it's out in the Queensland Channel country in the arid zone, but I've always been fascinated. I grew up being fascinated with wildlife, with plants and animals. And I used to terrify my mother by bringing snakes inside and spiders and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I've always been fascinated. And over the years, I've developed connections with museums and universities across the world. And we used to get lots of visitors from all these unis and museums coming to Noombar. And, yeah, just my fascination just grew and grew. And when the kids decided they didn't want the place, we sold it to my brother and moved up here in the Tablelands where it's nice and cool and it's nice and green and we don't get flies sand flies or mosquitoes we don't get <laughs> flooded we don't get burnt you and get, you the get a few pythons the plants and animals are just amazing up here yeah and and you've actually got a, several of them named after you now i've got uh, i've probably got about a dozen different species named after me i'd have to sit down and work it out but i've also named in conjunction with Patrick Cooper and a couple of others at the Queensland Museum, I named a new species of dragon lizard after my daughter, and it's called Diperifera ameliae. That's, that's one you can pronounce. Yeah, I can pronounce the ones that I've been involved with, but some of the rainforest plants, I just can't get my tongue around them. <laughs> good stuff. Okay, uh, well, keep up your good work there in beautiful far north Queensland. And, uh, yeah, we're interested to hear uh, when you come across a male of this species as well.